Welcome students to today's lecture. My name is Jafet Kafesha and I will be taking you through thermodynamics. So in today's world we need to convert various sources of energy like coal, oil, natural gas, wind, solar, etc. into useful mechanical form. Secondly, some of these forms of energy are non-renewable and are being depleted at a fast rate. The world is then faced with two challenges. The first challenge is to expand the available sources, current trends included obtaining energy from biofuels, hydrogen cells, etc. To utilize, the second is to utilize the available energy more efficiently. So it is important to understand the process that govern transformation of types of energy mentioned and the relationship between the associated work and heat and this is covered under thermodynamics. So thermodynamics is a branch of science that deals with the interaction between heat and work in the system. In engineering, thermodynamics is that tool that is necessary for understanding of energy which exists in mechanical form, electrical form, chemical form and their transformations like transformation of chemical energy into thermal energy. In thermodynamics, a wide range of energy systems can be analyzed using two primary laws, and these are what is called thermodynamics laws. The first law of thermodynamics and second law of thermodynamics. Before we get into that, we need to understand basic terminologies used in thermodynamics. The first is a substance. A substance by definition is the matter that performs the energy transformation. It may be a pure substance, that means there is, it is homogeneous in nature, having the same physical and chemical composition at all points in all conditions, like oxygen is a pure substance. And also we have impure substance, which are not pure, and this is uh, an example is air, which has nitrogen and oxygen condensed at different temperatures. <coughs> Another terminology is a system and is a region of finite quantity of matter or a space of fixed identity. A boundary is defined as the enclosing envelope for a system. It forms the interface between the system and the surrounding. Everything that is external to the system is known as surrounding. A system can either be closed system or open system. If the energy in form of work and heat can cross the boundary, but the boundary does not allow any matter exchange between the system and the surrounding, then this is called closed system. So this is indicated in figure 1.1 below. So the heat is added to this system in the steam generator, which is then required to vaporize the water into steam and the heat is lost from the sy this system in the condenser by condensing the spent steam back into water. On the other hand, work is put into this system in the pump in pumping water into the steam generator while work is extracted from this, this system in the turbine when the steam expands in the turbine to obtain mechanical work. However, there is no mass transfer across the system boundary as indicated by these dashed lines. So this shows that this system is a closed system, less than define an open system, is one that allows matter as well as work and heat to cross the boundary. This is indicated in figure 1.2 here, as you can see air fuel as well as cooling water in and out can mingle across these dashed lines. So, in this figure, the mass flow across the system boundary in the dashed line is in the form of air, fuel, cooling water, product of combustion. In some systems, there is no work, heat or matter transfer across the boundary. Such a system is referred to as isolated system. If a system is thermally isolated from its surroundings, or perfectly insulated, then it is referred to as a diabetic system, since no heat can cross the system boundary. Another definition, another terminology is equilibrium. 
when do we say that a given state is in equilibrium? So when there is no energy transfer between different parts of the mass of a fluid in a system, and if the mass of the fluid is isolated from its surrounding, if the thermodynamics properties are constant, then the fluid is said to be in equilibrium. So we have three types of equilibrium, thermal equilibrium, which occurs when the system and its surroundings are at the same temperature and there is no heat transfer across the boundary. Mechanical equilibrium, this occurs when there is uniform pressure or balance of forces between the system and its surroundings. Chemical equilibrium, this occurs when there is uniform chemical composition between the system and its surroundings. The next terminology is a process. Is a process refers to transformation of a system from one state to another. And the state of a substance completely describes how the substance exists. It comprises the temperature, pressure, density and other properties and by knowing these properties the state of the substance can be determined. The state of a system is the totality of its property like pressure, temperature, density, specific energy. While a property is an observable or calculable characteristic of a system like density, pressure, temperature, which depends not on how the system changes state but on only on the final system state. So there is intensive property and extensive property. An intensive property intensive property is independent of the size of the system like uh, we have temperature and extensive property depends on the size or the extent of the systems like mass and volume so a cycle and a path what's the difference so if the initial and final state of the process are the same then this process is a cycle a cycle implies a path this is a succession of system states so for example if the working fluid of a state one is water mechanical work is put into the water in the pump and the water is conveyed into the steam generator in state two in the boiler the water is vaporized into high energy steam in state three this steam expands in the turbine where its thermal energy is converted into mechanical work and come out in state 4 as low energy steam. This steam is then condensed in a condenser to convert it back into water in state 1. While work, work done on or by a system may be expressed as the product of force and distance move in the direction of the force. And if we take an example of a piston which is moved from the same initial state under pressure 1 and volume 1 to the same end or final state under pressure 2 to volume 2 via different paths let's say A and B if the cross-sectional area of the piston is A and the distance the piston travels between state 1 to state 2 is denoted by delta L then the delta W which is work is equal to pressure times area times small change in length which can be simplified as pressure times small change in volume. Now when we integrate, we get from state 1 to state 2 the, the integral of pressure and volume. So the sign convention of work is very important. When work done by a system on the surrounding, that work is positive. And work done by the surrounding on the system, that work is negative. <coughs> so dear students, this marks the end of our first lesson. Let's meet again in the next class. Thank you for listening. And in case you have a question, don't hesitate to...